What's up guys, how's it going? Mike the Tech here, and in this video I'm going to show you how to configure Sunshine version 0.21 for NVIDIA GPUs. Before we get started, if you're watching this video, chances are you're not subscribed because 99% of you... 99% of you are not subscribed. And that's a pretty bad number. So if you like this one, be sure to click on that sub or thanks button below. Speaking of thanks, huge shout out to Miss Mo Davis and Tammy the Psychic. Thank you so much for being channel members. If you want to support the channel and get shout outs in videos like this, click on that join button below. That is quite the intro. So now we are in the sunshine configuration. We're going to go ahead and click on configuration on this top panel here. And we're initially given the configuration page. On this general page right here, we have an area to change the name of the streaming service. By default, it's sunshine. Um, we can change the log level. Generally, you don't want to change this unless you're having issues where you need more debug information um, and you actually want to look at these logs. Then you can adjust this and uh, change the level, for example, verbose, getting all of the information um, all the time, which would obviously not be ideal if you're not actually reading the logs because it would just be a ton of uh, text and eventually a lot of space. Uh, the origin web UI allowed uh, essentially says where can people access this page from? So can they access it from your local area? Anyone on your Wi-Fi or local network? Or can they access it from anywhere on the web? So if you're uh, on vacation and away and you want to log in and connect from it from a different location, can you access it remotely? Or only the computer it's installed on can access it. So this is the highest level of security that you can essentially use on it where it actually has to be installed on this machine and you can use it on this machine only. You could still access it through remote desktop if you plan to do it that way. Um, but if you plan to uh, connect to it from other computers on your local network, you might want to uh, enable it for LAN as well. Now, UPnP is automatic port forwarding. This generally works uh, for local networks nearly all the time, unless you have multiple computers trying to be host, then it kind of gets iffy. Uh, and sometimes will work on remote as well. Uh, but you'll generally need to use port forwarding if you plan to use it remotely. I have a video on how to set up port forwarding for Sunshine, so check that out if you plan to use uh, Sunshine outside of your local network. The gamepads option here allows us to choose what kind of gamepad will be emulated, either a PlayStation gamepad or an Xbox gamepad. These are essentially the same, um, even if you're using a PS5 controller, so don't be uh, worried if you're like, well, this is PS4 and I have PS5. It's the same thing. Uh, same thing with the Xbox 360. They've used the same drivers for a very long time, but this continues to work with the uh, Xbox series, the Xbox One, the X all the Xbox controllers. So uh, you can essentially choose which kind you'd like to use or leave it automatic to attempt to detect automatically. Now the ping timeout is uh, in milliseconds. So this is essentially how long to wait before disconnecting uh, after not hearing from the Moonlight client. If this is too low and you get a lot of latency or you happen to have some uh, bad network connection for a few moments, then it could end the session early. If it's too high, then you're essentially streaming for no reason after you've disconnected. So uh, set this generally by default. Uh, to about, I think that's what, 10 seconds. Uh, so if you're not connected for more than 10 seconds, it will just disconnect, and that makes sense. Now, for resolutions, these are not the resolution that's actually going to be on your monitor. Like, choosing these isn't going to change that. Uh, this is the resolution of the stream being sent to the device. So you can have your monitor at 4K and be streaming at 1080p. So this is referencing those streams. Um, I stream to a Steam Deck, so I use 1280 by 800 as a custom resolution. Then when I start streaming, it's only streaming the exact size that my Steam Deck can handle and it ends up looking really nice. Similarly, we can adjust the frames per second that will be streaming. Again, this isn't how fast your game is playing. If your game is capped at 30 frames per second and you're streaming at 60, the uh, stream is still gonna attempt to capture 60 frames per second of that 30 frames per second game. So make sure you set this to exactly what you plan to be using. Uh, for example, if your device supports 60 hertz, don't stream 90 or 120 because you're going to be wasting resources and it's going to slow down your gameplay and potentially cause more latency. Now we have the map right alt key to windows key. Uh, this is useful if there's a specific reason why you can't use an actual windows key. This is an easy way to uh, switch that. Generally, you won't really need to do this. In command preparations, this is a command that's going to be run uh, before every single uh, sunshine session is started and what this is useful for is automatically doing things like setting the screen resolution the actual display resolution before starting your game for example you might use qres 
to change the display resolution to 1280 by 800 when you're streaming to your Steam Deck so that the screen uh, ratio matches exactly. Now, when you hit save, make sure to not only hit save, but also hit apply once you're done um, with all the changes you're gonna make because that will actually restart Sunshine and apply the changes. Now, there's not much to change under files. This is just default uh, file locations, unless you're actually uh, modifying the source or saving these for a specific reason, there's no reason to change these. Under input, the same thing applies, not too much to really adjust unless you want to disable mouse, keyboard, or gamepad input, for example. You can also adjust the key repeat delay and frequency. So for example, how often keys repeat every second and how often keys repeat themselves for when you're like holding down a button and it will continue pressing that button. So if I hold control, it might only press it once. But with a delay or a repeat, um, I can hold it down and every half second it'll repeat. So doom, 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 it'll just keep clicking. These are some very specific use case scenarios and there's very few times that you'd actually need to use that. Now, always send scan codes is just a way to ensure compatibility with most games and applications. Um, however, it can cause some issues if you're using a non-US uh, style keyboard. In those cases where there are issues with applications, you can disable this in order to use these standard uh, key inputs that come from that keyboard. Now, for audio settings, we can choose the audio to uh, actually pull the source from. So in this one, it's my high definition audio device and my general computer speakers, and that's what will be recorded. The virtual sync is where that audio will be played. In this case, we install the Steam audio drivers and it plays to a virtual speaker. If you want it to play out of your actual device, you can also uh, use the tools slash audio info tool to find out the name of your device specifically and apply it here. Now below here, you can also set some information about your graphics card. By default, it will automatically detect which graphics card is appropriate for streaming and use it automatically. If it doesn't for some reason, or you have a multi-GPU setup or an integrated graphics card that is taking priority for some reason, you can of course set this manually and use the tools slash DXGI dash info tool uh, in order to get the specific adapter names and output names. If you're using a virtual display, you can also enter the virtual display here. And uh, that way when you start streaming, it will stream what's on the virtual display as opposed to your actual displays, which may not be the appropriate screen ratio. Now for advanced, we can choose if we want to enable IPv4 or IPv6 support. Generally, every router has IPv4. Some routers have IPv4 and IPv6, but some, very few, but some new uh, modems uh, will give you only an IPv6 address. In those cases, uh, you can enable IPv4 and IPv6 uh, to work with Sunshine, and that will basically fix those issues or if any come up. Similarly, you can adjust the port if the 47989 port family doesn't work for you. Um, otherwise, you can use this handy graph that was just recently added uh, to add the port specifically to your router. So it tells you which ports you need to open and which ones you need to forward to whatever host IP Sunshine is running on. Now the quantization parameter or QP is the uh, essentially a different version of constant bit rate. Uh, if a device doesn't support constant bit rate, you use uh, QP instead. And by default, this is at 28. If you use a higher number, the compression will increase and you'll get better performance but with more compression, you're going to have a lower quality image. Lowering this number increases the quality of the image at the cost of a higher bit rate. Now, minimum software encoding thread count, you might be uh, tempted to just put in the max number of threads your CPU supports. This is not the way to go. Uh, generally, you want to use as few uh, cores as possible or threads as possible to properly run your stream. Uh, when you run it, uh, you're going to be most performant running on a single thread. As you add more and more, you're essentially using a higher percentage of your GPU or CPU than you would be if you were running that exact same quality stream on a single thread. So what I generally recommend is starting with one thread and seeing if it works. If it works, great. It's going to be the most performant as possible on that single thread. 
if it lags or it can't perform on a single thread and it needs more processing power, then you can sacrifice some of that performance, add a second thread, and then the stream will work. Uh, continue this process until you get a result that you're happy with and that is still performant and it won't affect your game. If you just go and add like a ton of threads here, then you're going to start uh, losing the ability to use those threads for other processes and games. HEVC support is generally recommended to stay on if you're using a GPU. If you're using software encoding, then you want to turn this off because it's actually very intensive and uh, can take a lot of your CPU power away. And since CPU is the, most of the time the bottleneck on gaming PCs, you don't really want to um, add any more work onto your CPU that's not necessary. Similarly, AV1 is a great new encoding format that allows you to get a higher quality for a lower bit rate, but this is a GPU heavy uh, or GPU intensive process. So if you're running software encoding, it's going to really put your CPU to work. Uh, so you want to turn this off if you're using software encoding. If you're using GPU encoding, uh, you want to turn this on, especially if your GPU supports native AV1 encoding, where it's going to use its own specific chip to do that on the side. Now, for Force specific encoder, uh, this is the NVIDIA video, so of course we're going to be choosing NVIDIA NVENC. If your card doesn't support this, uh, you can use Auto Detect, and it will detect the best method for you. The... FEC percentage is the essential error packets that get sent with your stream. The more error packets that get sent, the higher quality and the less um, packets will be lost on your stream, but you'll be sending more bandwidth along because you're sending more packets along. So the GeForce experience generally uses 20, so that's what the default percentage is here as well. It will send um, error correcting packets on 20% of the packets sent. Multicasting allows you to stream uh, not only to the Moonlight gameplay device, but to a secondary or even third device to display what is being played. It doesn't allow two people to play different games, but it does allow two streams to be simultaneously sent. And this is two encoded streams, so it's not one stream that's being broadcast to multiple. You are encoding a second stream to that device specifically, which can have its own settings. If you're using that feature, you want to set the number of channels to the number of devices you plan to stream to. So if you're streaming to your gameplay device and your TV so that you can play on your phone while the family watches, you might change this too. We don't need to change the web manager credentials file and if you know your external IP, you can manually set it here, but it will generally find this by default. Now we are in the NVIDIA video, so we're going to click on the NVIDIA NVENC encoder and talk about what these settings do. The first setting is our performance preset. This is the most straightforward and it generally means this is the highest quality and the highest bit rate, but it will be the slowest to encode and the most data to send over your network, so it'll be the slowest to get to your device. This can cause latency, and it can cause a heavy load on your GPU. If we choose fastest, which is the default, your stream will get to your phone very, very quickly because it's using a lower bit rate and uh, less processing power on your GPU, so the GPU can get it encoded faster, it can go over your network faster, it gets to you faster, that's less latency. However, because it's using less uh, bitrate, you are going to get a lower quality image. So there's some payoff on both sides. What I generally recommend doing is trying either from the bottom or the top or even from the middle. Um, let's say we want to try from the top and say like, this is the fastest default I play it. Runs great, low latency, awesome, but it looks a little funny. So maybe I'll set it to two, save, reset, and connect again, then see how that feels. If it starts to look a little bit better, I could say great, and it's still running pretty well, great. So I'll change it to three, save, apply, and then if I notice it starts lagging, maybe I can go back up to two and leave it there. So that's how you kind of find your middle spot of what works best, because uh, you do want to still push for a better image, but you don't want to sacrifice uh, gameplay and latency just for a little extra shine on the side. You know, you want to be able to play the game. Now, two-pass mode is great for fast-moving games. Uh, if you don't use two-pass mode, it's generally not recommended to disable this uh, at all, you're going to get a lower quality image. This can also cause the bitrate to jump up on fast-moving scenes, and the issue with, that that causes is a lot of routers aren't built to handle quick 
fluctuations in speed and quick changes in speed. So when you're you know playing at 5,000 kilobits per second for a long time and all of a sudden it needs 15,000 kilobits per second, you're going to get some lag and it's going to take a while and you're potentially going to um, have some degraded gameplay quality because of that. So generally we recommend leaving quarter resolution or if you want to use full resolution, you can do that as well. However, that is going to use more processing power. Now, use real-time priority and hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. This sounds really fancy. What it really just means is the GPU version of going into task manager and setting a process to high priority. Um, there are different priority levels. There's real time, which it means work on this as fast as you can. And then there's high priority, there's normal priority, and there's low priority processes, which are generally processes that run in the background and only once in a while. Um, by running this as a real time priority, it ensures that the CPU is going to prioritize the stream and get that to your device as quick as possible. This is a great thing. But if you're playing a game that also needs that, you know, GPU power and it's using all of your VRAM and it's using your GPU to its max potential and this is taking real time priority, you're going to see a uh, lag and skips and frames and potentially even freezing on NVIDIA drivers. So there has been uh, reports of the drivers and games actually freezing because the stream is trying to code in the same, you know, prioritization as the game itself and the VRAM is just full. So this is a great feature to use if it works. <laughs> if it doesn't work, if you start to notice that, you know, when whenever you play Cyberpunk and it's really just filling up your VRAM, you tend to get a crash or a bit of lag, you can try disabling this to speed things up and see if that helps. And finally, we have prefer CAVLC over CABAC. CABAC is essentially is 10% more performant using 10% less bitrate uh, requirements for the same quality. Uh, CAVLC uh, uses 10% more bitrate for the same quality. So why would you want to use this? You wouldn't. Uh, the only time you would actually change this is if you're using an old device that only supports it. If you're using a device that supports the new version, stick with the new version. If you're using a device that doesn't support it, it will tell you directly that it doesn't work. You can simply switch this and it will work fine. So that's it for this one. That's the NVIDIA video. I'll work on an AMD video, an Intel video, and a software encoder video uh, in the future and upload those shortly. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section below or jump into my Discord at discord.mikepatech.com. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Peace. Mike the tech, Mike the tech, huh? Mike the tech, the architect, huh? Mike the tech, Mike the tech, yeah. Mike the tech, the architect, huh?